The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It is June 28th, 530 on the dot. And I'm always amazed by scammers. Like, it seems like every single day we're coming out with a new scam that people have come up with. And I'd like to think that it's robots doing it. Like, I just mm-hmm. hate to think that humans are doing this to other humans. <laughs> but this one is happening in Toronto, and it is people who are posing as multiple different moving companies. Oh, They're taking people's payment to move them. Mm-hmm. They're going and moving them. They're taking their stuff. But then they're holding the stuff at ransom until you give them more money. What? Yeah. Isn't there like an easy workaround here? You would think that you would be able to call the police and bring them with you. But somehow the police have only just caught the first of many scammers doing this in Toronto. And I don't know if it's like they're they're holding it ransom and be like, don't call the police or we'll set your stuff on fire or something. (laughs) I'm not sure. But I'm just like, this is so humanly done like i just want to believe that yeah. robots are the ones behind the computer ones but this is actually real life i'd be like people. yeah i have all your money in cash where do you want it and i'll go meet him and i'd be like oh surprise i brought the f- cops with me yeah <laughs> sean like you have like grand plans about that but i just feel like i've seen way too many movies where they tell you not to bring the police and you do bring the, the police and they're like aha i've lit a match and i throw it on your thing the moving squad mafia oh jeez. <laughs> Just a heads up for everyone listening to the radio today. I, uh, Steph, we're, I believe we're working on our transmitter. Yeah, we're getting a brand new one. It's incredible. Do you yeah. know where it's going or what's happening? Or uh, It's about 200 feet away from our current one. Oh, okay. Uh, but the RMWB <laughs> is putting a new road in, and they want to do it right through where our regular transmitter is, so they've built us a new one instead. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so just a heads up, if you do hear anything Weird if the radio signal goes away. Maybe you're listening online and it goes away. Um, that That's why, because we are just doing a bunch of technical work with engineers and everything out on site. But we need you to tell us if something yeah. weird is happening because uh, we don't know. So that's right. make sure if you hear something <laughs> strange, please do call us, text us, 780-791-1037. Let us know. And we're also going to be playing, we have a, 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 a little liner that's going to be playing all throughout the day. And uh, just to remind you and everyone else, that uh, we are working on. So this is what it sounds like. Station CFVR, known as Mix 103.7, located in Fort McMurray, Alberta, broadcasting at 103.7 megahertz, is testing our new transmitter. If you have any concerns, please contact us at 780-791-0103. a selfie do you have a certain way you do it usually right hand uh, on the right side of my face that's my good side what about you okay Uh, I'm like pop socket out uh, (laughs) really trying and struggling to take it and then I say oh can you help me actually can you take it Um, that's basically how a selfie goes for me (laughs) (laughs) someone else takes it yeah like if we're like two people in the selfie (laughs) then I'm just like how about you stretch your arm out because mine is not able to coordinate (laughs) pressing the button smiling at the same time holding the phone out okay I've seen you do it before it's not that bad oh thanks you're really kind (laughs) Uh, well there's a new trend of taking selfies on point five. so if you have like a newer iPhone it's like the fisheye lens on the front side of the camera oh and basically, it makes your arm look like it's 10 feet long. And oh, heck yeah. you take these selfies. Um, but as I was looking it up last night, I was like, okay, like, what is going on with this? What came up instead mm-hmm. was a high five selfie, not a point five selfie. Oh. And in 2016, there was a trend where people were trying to high five themselves while taking a selfie and then catching their phone before it fell and broke. Jeez. And I was like, No, don't want that. Why are we so stupid? Like, <laughs> we had the Tide Pods in 2016. Oh, yeah. We had the Hi Fi selfie in 2016. I hope we're getting better. Like, this 0.5 selfie doesn't seem dangerous. Just seems like you're, you're just trying to optical illusion things. That's but... fun. I need to get myself a new phone. Yeah. Do all these new ones have the, the fishbowl lens? I th- Well, I mean, I have a 12 and I've had it for a year. I think the 13 is out. I'm pretty sure the 11 had Jeez, it. Jeez, so. I have a free upgrade. I should 
didn't look into that. Sean, it's time. Yeah. You've got to get your 0. 0.5 selfie right. on. And while you're at it, when you're done with your old phone, why don't you try the high five selfie? No, I'm no case for a reason. <laughs> it survives. I'm always looking to learn new things about driving, really about anything that, you know, might be a common place for some, but I've just never heard of it. Mm-hmm. The other day, I saw somebody post about how 500 cars passed them before somebody actually knew what they needed. Okay, what was it? It was a motorcycler who had put his helmet on the side of the road behind his bike. Okay. Do you know what that means? Going for a whiz? Nope. All right. Nope. He didn't need help with that. (laughs) He would hope that 500 cars would pass you if that was what he was doing. (laughs) Uh, He needed gas. And so basically, apparently, if you are a motorcyclist and Mm -hmm. you put your helmet on the ground behind your bike, it means that you would love a ride. You would love someone to pick you up, stop, see what you need. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess because probably with motorcycles, you don't have room to carry a jerry can with you everywhere. Yeah, for sure. So you can't just walk yourself to a gas station and fill up unless they're selling jerry cans there, but... Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, and I mean, gas tanks aren't that big, and especially these days, sometimes you're leaving a little bit <laughs> longer than you probably uh-huh, should. Uh-huh. So, motorcycle code, there you go. There's another one. If you're ever driving along and you see somebody with their helmet on the <laughs> on the road, stop and help them. There we go. Drive them to the next gas station. They can walk themselves back. <laughs> <laughs> Went to a store I always go to last night, and I was kind of looking around very confused. Why? Um, well, it felt like they renovated, but like nothing was really changed and nothing looked brand new. It just looked different. Oh. And finally I was like, you took down the plexiglass. <laughs> oh, from the cashier's place. Yeah. And oh. it was like, I could just reach out and, and say hello to the cashier with my arm like now or with my spit. <laughs> um, <no>. Ew. <laughs> Sorry, there's no guard is what I'm saying. I wasn't trying to be a weirdo. It's just like I wouldn't reach out to the cashier with my arm, but spit might fly out of my mouth. <laughs> Sean, this is your fault. I was what? just, it was an offhanded comment and you took it so further. Oh, you're the one that <laughs> mentioned it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, interesting. I wonder if other other places are going to follow suit. Yeah, I wonder what they do with the extra plexiglass as well. I wonder, because I, I didn't mind it. Yeah. It was fine. I think, uh, I always love when people would just talk around them. <laughs> it was just like, it's not what, it's there for a reason. You're not supposed to just like put your head around it and be right in the person's face. Yeah, I do feel like, though, it was a little bit difficult, I think, for workers to understand people beyond the plexiglass. I like, think the workers were fine. I think it was more the customers. Oh, perhaps. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think yeah, it they, was a they lot probably of the customers. got pretty good at translating. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that plexiglass is such a um, fragile type of material. Yeah. Like, as soon as you move it, you're going to get a scratch on it. And <laughs> plexiglass is not forgiving. You can't see through it once it gets a few scratches. True. So I feel like... Now that they've removed this, they probably won't be able to reinstall that same plexiglass if restrictions come back into play. Yeah, I'm just going to wait for some entrepreneur to come up with some idea to like melt plexiglass into like clean energy or something and then just like create a better world out of it. I bet you it's coming in like a year. You're hearing it here first. Maybe this is a (laughs) entrepreneurial idea for you, Sean. Start calling up those eco-friendly people. There we go. (laughs) How would you say the mosquitoes are in the RMWB this time of year right now? Um, I feel like you usually kind of expect the mosquitoes to be bad for the month of June and July you can go back outside. Yeah. I So far, I find them not bad at all. Well, aren't you just having the worst smelling blood ever? (laughs) Because, well, okay, I've been down in Edmonton visiting my girlfriend. I've been home to Regina for a wedding. Absolutely horrendous in both oh. those areas. Up north here, we got it good. Okay, okay. My I, perspective, at least. I have to say, actually, I had the same experience that Athabasca had a million mosquitoes, so much so that I was going to have a campfire and didn't. Because I was really? like, I would rather stay inside and not be swatting. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. Because, yeah, I go for, like, walks around here. I go for by, like, ponds and everything. And I don't notice them all too much. I don't have to wear bug spray. I've never, I haven't put on bug spray once in Fort McMurray this year. Wow. Whenever I've gone out. But, like, when I was in other areas, I've had to. Impressive. Um, This all comes back around because there's a researcher over in BC, and he wants to try and predict the way the world's going to move forward through mosquitoes. 
Wow. And when I say move forward, just essentially like diseases and stuff. He's trying to predict uh, how diseases transfer and everything through mosquitoes. So he's asking residents, um, mainly BC, but some parts of Alberta as well, if you swat a mosquito to please send him it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and from there, he's just like, uh, he's basically just saying, if you want to take part, uh, record the date that you killed the mosquito. <laughs> also, the longitude and latitude of it, which you can get on your apps, and then email him and then just basically send the mosquito. So, I don't know how you send one, but send it. And then he's gonna, just going to try and uh, figure out with like climate change, with hotter winters, colder right. or hotter hotter summers colder winters wetter springs essentially <laughs> uh he he's saying mosquitoes are the way of the future for trying to predict things this is amazing i mean they're so small but also when i swat a mosquito if it's biting me there isn't much left of it you know <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, right. it, it's you have like flat. three pieces of it. <laughs> yeah and it's kind of one swift motion you know you hit it and then you wipe your arm off and so if he wanted the dust that was left <laughs> perhaps a little of my blood i guess he could have it <laughs> yeah i think that's what he's going for but i don't know like i don't know if this is actually true or if this is just like a fetish of his like oh, Sean. gathering a bunch of like blood and mosquitoes and he's actually like secretly a vampire or something i don't know <laughs> I've always been a bit accident prone, but it seems the older I get, the easier and easier it is to injure myself. Oh, especially the back. The back hurts all the time, hey? It does. It does. And then you just pull something or you just stand up too fast <laughs> and all of a sudden your back's thrown out and you got to go to physio. I watch someone like pick up weights and I can feel it in my back. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, how'd you do that? Did you stretch first? Yeah. What, use your knees. Bend with the secret? knees. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, I did it again, threw out my back. Oh, no. Any guesses as to what I was doing? No. <laughs> Breathing? <laughs> Breathing? Living? Sneezing? Coughing? Lying a <laughs> weird way on the couch? <laughs> I was making my bed. I was, yeah. I was getting ready to lie down in a, in a comfy spot, but had to pull out the corner a little bit to get that fitted sheet wow. around. And yep throw my back oh and the crazy thing is i did this when i was 22 the first time i ever threw out my back i had grown up with my mom doing it all the time and i thought she was crazy i was just mm. like what? what's going on like how is this happening and then i was making my bed and throw out my back for the first time back then and i was like this is awful jeez like, it runs in the family yeah i'm like i should have been nicer to my mom all those years <laughs> um but now yeah every time i do it when i'm making my bed i just like i feel back when i'm 22 and and <laughs> the complete shock of the pain that comes the with ptsd it. of making your bed is real with you it sticks around yeah i should just <laughs> i should just tell my husband i can no longer make the bed anymore yeah. it's just not good for me actually can absolutely <laughs> Send those duties elsewhere. 780-791-1037. We want to hear the most ridiculous ways that your back has been hurting lately. After you get past your 30s, it seems your back gets hurt. No matter what you do in this world, we posed the question over on our Facebook page as well. How have you hurt your back? And the answers are just flying in. I have a story from just this weekend. Really? What did you do? Uh, I, I worked in radio. I, <laughs> I was on location at the uh, the golf tournament and I was just manning the tent, just standing around talking to people. And then when I got home that night, back was a little sore. When I woke up the next day, it was Sunday, I woke up and I was just like, what is going on? Oh, is this no. just from having a long day working? Oh no. Like standing, standing. And my back was hurting. That is an impressive feat. I haven't gotten to the standing <laughs> with a sore back yeah. yet. But and so I, I um. I went for a massage yesterday. Oh. I feel better today. Look at you using yeah. the bennies. Okay. Yeah, I used okay. the bennies and I was just like, <laughs> it literally felt like someone was like punching me in the middle of the back. Wow. Like I just had this like jabbing pain from standing. I was just like, that's not great. That's not great at nope. all. <laughs> Andrea said that her Ford Explorer had massaging seats and every time she used them, her she would throw her back out. I don't know if she was like... <laughs> Are you using it wrong? Maybe I think like it's supposed to do the opposite. I think loose... it's supposed to feel you good. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I'm like, maybe it loosened up the muscles. Maybe you should be careful with your back now, Sean, after having the massage yesterday, that perhaps it's going to be more susceptible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's how it works. Oh, okay. I think something's wrong okay. with her. <laughs>
It, it took me four different tries, but I finally got through and I watched all of Dune last night. That's impressive because the four tries were you falling asleep within t- 10 minutes, mm-hmm. 26 minutes, oh, yeah. another 10. Like yeah. you were really failing at this movie. Big time. It's two hours and 40 minutes long. I remember when it came out. Was this, do you, I don't even know if you remember. Was it a pandemic movie? Was it like a 2020, but then it got released in like 2021 because oh. of filming and all that? Yes, I think you're right. It was. Okay, so. Uh, When I was looking into this, I remember a lot of hype was around it. It was, like, nominated for, like, these movie awards. It's because it was running against nothing. It had to have been. Ouch. It was not great. Now, I will take it on myself. I don't know. I I didn't even want to, like, research. Usually when I watch a movie, I'll research it a little bit afterwards. I didn't even want to spend an extra second on it last night after I finished watching it. So maybe I was supposed to read a book beforehand or watch another film beforehand so I could get the plot a little bit. (laughs) But it was so confusing. A lot of the scenes were just dark. What is it with movie nowadays and TV shows with just having like black screens and then you just have to kind of try and decipher. Like hope you can see the shadows moving around. (laughs) I paused the movie and I went into my TV settings to turn up the brightness. Wow, that's bad. What is happening here? (laughs) Now, Sean, were you giving it your full attention? Did you give it at a college try? Like, or were you scrolling on Twitter? Phone was away. I was watching. Well, I fell asleep three times before. (laughs) And then finally, the fourth time, I I watched all two plus hours of it. Committed to it. You're like, I've put 20 minutes three times into this. I got to finish. And then finally, yeah, I I woke up from my nap yesterday. Well, I I, I tried to watch it before my nap. Fell asleep within (laughs) 10 10 minutes. And then then I watched it all after my nap. And it was just, it, it was bad. It was bad. It's so slow. There's 700 things, like, they, they don't intro anything. They're just like, oh, main character dead. Oh, new alien species is coming in, and they just killed everyone. And now, and now we have another new alien species killing everyone again. And then now you're the king. And it's just like, was I, I think I had to, uh, I needed to read something beforehand, because... Uh, all of a sudden it ended and now there's a Dune 2 and there's not a chance. I'm watching it. Send your movie recos to Sean because he clearly <laughs> needs them. He's making bad choices. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> How do you feel about going on a cruise ship on the water? Have you ever done it? I have never done it and I don't think I ever will. Yeah, I think uh, I'm in the same boat. Uh, <laughs> I will never. I don't. The thought of being alone in the ocean on a boat and like land is days away creeps me out a little bit. Yeah, pretty vast as well. Just all the germs that live on cruise ships. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. The thought of it, the thought of it is very fun. It's very exciting. But then actually being there, I don't think I would like. <laughs> uh, the opposite kind of almost is happening. Well, the same thing, but in the air. What? Uh, f- the future is coming soon. Maybe. Uh, cruise ships for airplanes is what someone drew a concept design of that was going viral yesterday on social media. They don't have a date of when they could possibly say, oh, by 2070, we might be able to get this done. They don't have any future date like that, but concept designs are being drawn for cruise ships by airplanes. Okay, I'm actually looking at this now. That Mm. is terrifying. And I don't really get it. Like, I want to take an airplane to get somewhere else (laughs) to explore something beautiful. And the idea of just being in the air on like (laughs) at a luxury thing. So it's like, okay, well, you can go swimming while you're on an airplane. Yeah. Okay. What? Why? (laughs) (laughs) And sure, you have like some cool views while you're in the air. Uh, Like this thing is being, they're they're dubbing it the hotel of the future. And it could see like this airplane could host up to 5,000 people at one time. Like it's a hotel. Wow. It, it, It has like... This, it, the the concept that they drew up says it's going to have like shopping malls. It's going to have movie theaters. It's going to have like a, a mini hospital in there with like MRI machines and stuff, just in case anyone gets gets hurt in there. It's going to have multiple restaurants. It's going to have a wedding venue in case people want to get married while in the air. The like the the brains on the person who put this together might have been twelve. <laughs> 
Apparently. Like it was just it was just like a twelve year old just being like, I want to fly in a plane and have like the West Edmonton Mall in there. Yeah, it seems kind of like a school school project where they're like build your dream home, build mm-hmm. your dream airplane. Like my dream airplane has a little bit <laughs> extra leg room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, but then there is like some scientists came on board with this and they said like nuclear energy is going to power it. It's going to be power or it's going to be piloted by computers, AI. Of course it is. And it's actually going to have its own type of technology that can detect when turbulence is coming. And so it will automatically either adjust to it or avoid it, which just blows my mind how that can even be a thought when everyday planes don't have that yeah and to think like if there was turbulence wouldn't you just be like sweet i'm in a wave pool now <laughs> yeah so uh no timeline on this but i'll be interested to see if it if it slowly comes to fruition because i've been wrong before i think we'll be old and gray by the there time it does. <laughs> one more of today's show download the mixed mornings and more podcast now available every weekday